Hello everyone, a very good afternoon. I would like to thank you all for joining us today. My name is Aparna Halda and I will be hosting this webinar. Before we get started, please let me take a few minutes to introduce Payatu. Payatu is a research-powered cybersecurity consulting firm. We have a decade-long track record with a singular focus on cybersecurity. The foundation of Payatu rests upon three pillars. Community and conferences encompass NullCon, an international security conference training and exhibition platform. Hardware.io, a hardware security focused conference along with other initiatives. Consulting and training focuses on thorough security assessment, which helps businesses to discover security threats and further provide training to strengthen network infrastructure. Lastly, we have two products in private beta trials, that is Exploity, a firmware analysis framework and cloud first, an advanced buzzing framework. Here is an overview of the various consulting assessments we are known for across the globe. Payatu has delivered many cyber talks and workshops in top security conferences that also includes Black Hat and DEF CON. We take pride in the decade-long impact we have created by contributing to the cybersecurity community all around the world. That was all about Payatu. Today, Hari Prasad, Payatu's security consultant, will deliver a webinar on electron application penetration testing. You can read all about him on this slide. Before I hand it over to Hari, I request you to follow a few housekeeping tips. Please be on mute. If you have a question, you can write it in a chat box. We'll answer the questions during the intervals or at the end of the webinar. We will be releasing the recording of this webinar on our LinkedIn page. So make sure you are following Payatu. If you are not following the page, check the link in the chat box. You will be directed towards Payatu's LinkedIn page. Without further ado, let's get started. Hari, over to you. Thank you. Hi, everyone. So today we are going to discuss about electron application penetration testing. So in this webinar, I will cover the very fundamental things of electron, electron applications like the structure of electron applications and the common uh, misconfigurations found in the electron applications and the exploitation of uh, remote code execution in the electron applications and the mitigation as well. So after completing this webinar, you will be get the some of the uh, most of the foundation or the basics of the electron applications. So just discuss about what was the electron. So electron is basically a simple framework is used to create multi uh, cross platform applications, desktop applications. So we already know that there's a lot of native languages and the frameworks is there to develop the desktop applications. Then why the electron is there? So the answer was very simple. Electron frameworks was very simple to develop. If anyone already know that the basics of all the uh, experts in the web application development, he can also develop the desktop application in the cross platforms like Mac and Windows Linux. Also, it was an open source framework is developed and maintained by GitHub. So the, I think the first application is uh, developed by GitHub. It was the Atom uh, editor. So I don't know how many of them really know about that, uh, about the electrons, but in our day-to-day -day life, especially in techies and the IT, IT workers are using the electron applications like Visual Studio Code and Twitch, Slack, Discord, and Rocket Chat. Recently, Rocket Chat also had one uh, remote code execution vulnerability and Teams, Postman, Atom. So how does the electron applications look? Elpo is working based on the Chromium browser developed by Google NIC. And the electron using the Chrome Chromium for the interface, the user interface, and the Node.js for the backend. So this is the combination of Chromium and the electron uh, Node.js to develop the desktop application. multi-process model. So we we know that uh, the web uh, how critical the web applications uh, nowadays. 
because the web application there's a lot of technologies is using for the develop to develop the web applications so we are also using uh, multiple tabs or windows to browse the applications so just imagine if something happened for the one tab if some malicious code executed in one tab or one window and it was going to affect the entire browser or the entire application so the team come up with the idea using the multi multi process so the electron application create one main process which was responsible for creating and maintaining is the rendering process is the sub process so if something was happened for the rendering process is not going to affect the entire application so this is the idea behind the electron application multi process reversing electron applications so before starting before starting the penetration testing on the electron application or the any application it was good to know about the logics of the application or the uh, reviewing the source code of the applications so for that we are, uh, we need to reverse the application to get the source code so we can identify the flow of the application and the logical bugs also uh, the behavior of the application how the developer really develop the applications so in that way we can instead of getting the low hanging fruits we can deep dive into the application and try to get the more critical bugs so today we are going to try to reverse uh, three format of uh, electron application one was app image this was uh, basically used in the linux uh, platforms and the dmg is used in the mac platforms and the exe for the windows so let's try to uh, was the first one the app image so let me know that uh, my vm screen is visible for you Your screen is visible. So to reverse the uh, application, I am using one application called Notable. So is it basically not taking app? So one more disclaimer is there. Please, if you are going to trying to reverse it, please use uh, version one point five point zero. This is only version they uh, open source. So I already downloaded the application here. So the first thing we need to give the permission executable permission for it. So the next command is um, app image mount. It will be mount the application to the temporary folder. So you can see that uh, the mounted folder here. So just navigate the folder. This folder you can see the resource folder. Basically, we can we are going to focus on get the appsr file. We will discuss about the appsr file later. So 
the app as a file can be founded in the resource folder. So let's navigate the resource folder. So you can see the app as a file here. For the further reference, I am just copying the episode file to my desktop. So let's try to reverse the DMG file. For that, we need to use one tool called HFS loop. I already downloaded it. We need to run the SFS loop with the uh, directory and uh, directory of the binary and the binary name. So this tool also try to mount this application. So we can try to get the episode file. So you can see that there is a folder called notable.app. Try to get into notable.app. So in here, we can see there's a folder called contents. And now we get the resource folder. Okay. So you can see the episode file in the same directory. So to download it, we can try. So we, we can use the pull command pull app dot ASR. So it will be written to the temporary folder. So reversing windows the exe files it was pretty simple um, so let me Okay, I already installed the notable app here. So you can see the icon. So just we need to navigate the folder of this application. Open the file location. So in this location, you can see the same folder called resource folder. So in here, you will get the episode file. So the directory will be different for every application. So you can easily find this one. So 
so in the previous step we already uh, we got the asr file so asr is the archive that contains the source code of the electron applications so the next process we need to reverse the asr file as well to get the uh, application source code In the previous step, we we already gone by app dot asr file. Let me move any of the previous files. So to reverse the asr file, first we need to install the asr. So that I already install it, but I will show you how to install it. ISG for global. Yeah, in this way you can. Uh, install the ASR file. So it has package. So the command is very simple ASR extract app.asr, that is the file name, and the destination folder. Perfect. So we extracted the uh, reverse the ASR file. Let's see what what other files can be found in the application. So just open the folder in the sublime. So yeah. now we can easily get the source code of the electron application. This is the source code of that application, not about electron application. So we will discuss, discuss about the structures and the files in the coming session, in the coming presentations. Okay. Now let's try to find some vulnerabilities in the dependencies. It was very, uh, I think if someone working in the um, electron, uh, sorry, the Node.js application, it was very common command, NPM audit. So first we need to navigate the folder. So most probably we get uh, some error like this. So to solve this, we just need to run this command npm minus i package lock on. Now we can start auditing. So in this application, there was no vulnerabilities. Um, we can also try some other application in the next slides. Okay. So now we uh, get the source code. So this is the time to analyze the application source code. So first one is the package.json. In packages, package.json, you will find the uh, metadata of the application and the depend dependencies and the versions and the other details. So you can uh, get a lot of uh, metadata from the JSON file, all dependencies and insertions. So 
So for the CCT, I was going to use one more application called Electro Web Activities. It was uh, using uh, wearable application. So this is the package for the JSON query. You know, here you can see the uh, name of the application and the version and the description. And you, one of the main thing you can see this and main main and is values called index.js. So the index.js is the entry point of this application. So uh, basically we can say that the main process of this application and the other details and dependencies and its version. These are the uh, dependencies I use to develop this application and the uh, uh, version of this. So in here as well, we can uh, we can find the find, uh, vulnerabilities in the uh, dependencies. So now we just look into the index.js file. Okay. So basically I say that, uh, as I said, this is the one of entry point of this application. So in here, uh, we are requiring the electron and this was the main modules of this um, application I was used. The app module is used to handle the uh, app module gives us a lot of uh, events, event handlers. So we can use this uh, module to um, get the sta uh, state of the application and uh, Based on this uh, state, we can run the uh, process. So I just was creating one main browser window. So browser window is used to create one interface or the one tab. And this was the web preferences we will discuss later. So in here, you can see that in main window, we are loading one file called index.htm. This was the uh, Rendered on the electron application. So in here you can see that this was uh, the HTML and CSS I was used to develop this application, and some jQuery is also there. So basically, this was the very simple structure of the uh, electron application. So if you want to get the flow of this application, first you need to go to the package.json file and find out that where is the main. Uh, the main and you can find uh, the uh, uh, the entry point of this application. Okay, now let's discuss about the web preferences. So this was the main thing we need to focus on. So first was the node integration. So node integration is will enable us to access the node APIs in the rendering processes. So we'll show you one example for that. Now I'm going to change the node integration to false. really uh, this was the application so now we can't uh, see that it's not look like a browser right so it was actually a browser not a browser actually but we get the developer tools and everything here for that we, we just need to uh, press the control shift i so you will get the uh, developer tool here so i'm just trying to Hold the electron in the front end.
so now you can see that the record is not defect so the application was not able to access the uh, node APIs in the front end so let's close the application and uh, just enable the node integration through Google. and again run the application So now we are able to access the uh, Node.js APIs in the front end. So this was called the uh, Node Integrations. So what was the importance of the Node Integrations? If the Node Integrations enabled in the uh, Electron applications, if there is any process scripting, is, uh, if the application is vulnerable for the process scripting, the attacker will be able to invoke the node APIs and that's, that's easily we can lead into the remote code execution. Context expression. So we are not going to thoroughly look into this future. So this is the, this is also one security feature. This will be, um, enables the, uh, actually, uh, this feature enables the uh, create separate context between payloaded script and the internal logical script. Okay, so now we are going to find the what the exact uh, vulnerabilities in this application. So for that, go to the index.html file. So this is jQuery is the so what was actually the application doing? Application just getting the message value from the input field and it was just appending to the interface. So yeah, there is basically there is no validation for the uh, there is no validation. So we know that it, it was a prom based on chromium process, so we can easily make get the process scripting in the application. So let's try to get trigger process scripting. We were able to execute JavaScript in the front end. So, usually, as I said, if the application is vulnerable to process scripting, so and also the node integration is enabled, so the attacker can easily access the uh, node APIs in the front end. So, we can trigger the uh, process scripting into the RC remote code execution. Let's try it. So for that we can use the node API called child process. We can use a use the exe sync module. So and start. And open my screen is to fit.
we need to close the application again and we need to reason. So you can see that we will be able to execute the calculator in the application. We, we can use any of the commands, voice commands. Yeah. We can run any of the words comments. So we started from reversing the notable app. So the app was a vulnerable for the RC. Uh, I think it was founded by uh, several. Okay, so uh, one CV also published it for that. Let's try to execute it. I just put the pen over here and Sorry, I think I'm using the patch version. So anyway, uh, this version is vulnerable for the uh, vulnerable for the remote code execution. Yeah. So mitigations. So the mitigation is uh, not a, uh, we can we cannot mitigate the, the vulnerability in a single level of uh, single layer of protection. Is we need to put the layers of protection is there. First of all, we need to, uh, we, need, we don't need, uh, if you got, uh, we, we need to validate the user input and we need to define the proper security policies. Also, we need to enable the context isolation. So if they, if in, if any uh, code executed in the render process is not going to execute in the main process. So, we can reduce the risk of the attack. 
also uh, we we need to disable the uh, node integration so in this way we can secure the electron application from the process scripting as well as the remote code executions yeah thank you so the session is open for all your queries uh, if you have any questions, please put that on the chat box. Hari, uh, I request you to go to the chat box and answer a few questions posted by our participants. Uh, Hari, you are on mute. If you are speaking something, uh, it's not audible. Sorry. Yeah. So, yes, uh, the uh, render process uh, will be uh, running in different threads. Yes, you can get the uh, every steps and uh, every details in my blog. I also wrote a blog regarding this, so you can find it in Fire Two blog session. Yeah, you can uh, use the note taking app, or either you can use the uh, electro accesses. Uh, I will share the link in the chat as well. So, yeah, uh, we can say is uh, the application is running entirely in the web browser. A uh, lot of difference is there. But yeah, we can uh, look for the web application vulnerabilities as well as the mobile application vulnerabilities. Like you can uh, check for the, is there is any sensitive data is logging in. Uh, that's kind of bugs we can find in the electron application as well. Uh, yeah, we can. Ask a question like it is possible to do the uh, what we call the dependency confusion attack here in the uh, electron applications. Uh, sorry, I didn't get like, it. Is possible if we can attack with the RG uh, that happens if there is dependency, confusion attack. for example, if there is some private dependency in the Node.js, can we register the same dependency in the public, uh, you know, registry and uh, execute the uh, remote code. Yeah, obviously, if, but uh, that's also depends, right? Uh, if the uh, if the dependency is vulnerable for the uh, any kind of attack, we need to exploit it. Then it's valid. Okay, like there is node modules uh, folder inside the application or install at the time when we install the application. Yes, uh, when we installing the electron and everything is uh, pre-installed with the, uh, I will show you the modules. Mm -hmm. So you can see the node modules here. Every module is pre-installed with the application. Okay, these are pre install right? Yeah. Okay. So, for that, we don't need to maintain this folder actually. If you, the once we installing the application, the, the first process, the application look into the dependencies, the package.json, and the 
you can see the electron is already there and the jacket. So this depends is our first stage child. That so means, if there is some vulnerability in the dependency version, mm -hmm. so can that okay. have application also? So we can try to exploit it. So uh, that will be also affect the electron application. Okay. But that also depends upon the configurations that make. I understand. I believe like the main difference here is like, uh, like when we execute the access in the browser, uh, there we cannot, uh, you know, run the commands over the uh, machine, right? Like from the browser, we cannot execute the code. Like here, the difference is like uh, JavaScript is being executed on the machine itself. That is the difference between the uh, Node yeah. yes, and the, uh, you know earlier version of the JavaScript that used to it would only exactly. only on the browser side. So that makes it vulnerable to the RCI, I guess. Sorry, uh, the last I didn't get. Like the main difference here begins when there is difference in the JavaScript. You know, when we exploit accesses in the browser, that accesses cannot, you know, uh, you know, run over your machine. That cannot uh, execute on your machine. But here, the uh, JavaScript is being used as the Node.js. Uh, that is that is the V8. Uh, V8. Yeah, V8 JavaScript engine is there. Also, yeah. actually, the electron itself having the uh, capability to access the internal file system. That's the main difference. Yeah, that access is being, uh, I, I guess, run over the V8 engine that, that gives way to the uh, remote code execution, right? Yeah. Okay. I guess this is very critical. That's so, yeah, the question it was, uh, it was. Is it possible to intercept the traffic? But yeah, sure, you can. Uh, you just need to configure the proxy for the uh, system itself. Then you can uh, intercept the traffic of the electron application. There is uh, uh, two, three types of, we can uh, try to configure. But yeah, the uh, main thing we can uh, just configure the proxy for the uh, Internet Explorer so we can easily, or the Chrome, we can easily uh, intercept the traffic of the application. Uh, does this happen on the mobile also? Like this, does Electron work on the mobile side also, or it's just for the uh, you know desktops or the lab? Electron is basically co focusing on the uh, desktop application. Okay. No, I guess like these these two are the very critical. Like the accesses leads to the RC. That is the I guess the biggest critical vulnerability that can happen in the electron. I guess that's what I am taking from here. Yeah. yeah. Actually, this was the very basics of the electron. There was a um, lot of topics is, is the uh, context, uh, context isolation, 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 and the uh, uh, CSP bypass. Lot of, lot of things is there. Yeah, definitely. You can arrange some, uh, you know, another session. We can hear from you people. Mm, sure. So I hope I answer for the for your question. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you so much. This was very Thank nice. You. I learned a lot from this. Thank you. Yeah. Uh, so I guess there are a few questions in the chat. Uh, and uh, if anybody has any questions, the session is still open. Uh, Hari, uh, there is N Krishna here who has asked Does electron pen, uh, pen testing have any major critical high severity bugs? Yeah. 
Yes, uh, I think is is all based upon the impact of the vulnerability. So uh, there's uh, you can get some checklist in the uh, internet. So it's all about the impact of the findings. Yeah, I guess we should try also the other vulnerability that exist in the web, like the Bola uh, that can exist mm -hmm. by intercepting the traffic and try all different accounts. Like there are all the possibility that can happen over the web that we can try here, I guess. Yeah. Like the only challenge will be to intercept the traffic. So if there can be any guide that can help us to do the, the only that particular uh, application or the whole systems traffic through the web. That will be uh, really Yes, there is some uh, black hat we use uh, in the YouTube. You can go to the, uh, go through that. But yeah, there is a lot of uh, resources available, but uh, I will share some of them. In the comment is a shared one GitHub link. So you can uh, find the most uh, overall uh, resources in that uh, GitHub repository. Uh, so as This is the application I must develop uh, electro accesses you so you can practice on it. Uh, uh, all right. Uh, are there any more uh, questions? I guess uh, there are no more questions. Thank you, Hari, for a wonderful webinar. And I would like to thank all the participants for attending this webinar. The, uh, the recording of this webinar would be soon posted on our social handles. So ensure that you are following priority. And thank you so much. Thank you, Adi. Thank you. Thank you, everyone.